it may be starting to feel like the time of peace skiing is coming to a close, but it's this time of year when Chamonix really comes into its element. So Chamonix is not about peace skiing, not really. It's all about the ski touring, ski mountaineering, and of course, steep skiing. Sure, plenty of people, many of yourselves included, come here exclusively to go peace skiing, but really, that's not what Chamonix is all about. Chamonix is famous for the high alpine environment. So, I kicked off my ski mountaineering account for the season on Point Yeld last Friday, also known as the Traverse of the Guy de la Noir. It's not a particularly well named, but it's certainly an iconic line. You would have no doubt seen footage of the various Chamonix pros skiing it over the years, but it's a proper serious line. It's not all that steep by Chamonix standards, it's only 40 to 45 degrees, but yeah, it's proper high alpine, high mountain environment, serac dangers, crevasse dangers, avalanche dangers, the lot, but it's an absolutely amazing line, and amazingly, something which basically never happens in Chamonix, we got to open the line. It was completely untracked and untouched before us, indeed guides were actually following us up on the way up so that's a pretty cool experience to be had. Sadly we lost the visibility on the descent so we couldn't actually see much of what we were skiing but even so the snow was incredible and it yeah I'm so happy to have ticked it off it was a brilliant line. But sadly just a couple of days after we were there skiing it a guy was killed in an avalanche on exactly the same line so that just goes to show just how serious this kind of skiing is and it's not to be taken lightly at all. Also this week, I managed to ski the lower half of Jäger Couloir, which is a couloir parallel to Jiva City Couloir, which is arguably the king line of the Chamonix Massif, or certainly one of them anyway. And yeah, the Jäger Couloir is proper, proper steep skiing. Averages about 55 degrees for much of its length. So yeah, really, really steep. And also pretty narrow as well. Much narrower than the Jiva City. I started far too late in the day to be able to do the whole thing, so it's one to go back for. But yeah, that was a... That was a great line as well, even though the snow itself wasn't actually that good that time. Also earlier in the week, the Trappier Couloir was skied. This is a line which overlooks La Zouche, and it's probably one of the longest continuous couloirs in the area. You start skiing at about 3,000 metres, and the couloir goes all the way down to the valley bottom, so that's nearly a 2,000 metre long couloir. Of course, you can rarely ski the lower part, and even when the snow is good enough, generally you're cut into the woods anyway for safety. But yeah, 1,300, 1,500 metres of continuous powder skiing. And that's what guide Ross Hewitt found up there earlier in the week. In other news, Faye Manners was off competing a pretty impressive looking enchainment of three couloirs on the Italian side of the Massif. Each of them close to a thousand metres long in its own right. So yeah, nearly 3,000 metres of steep skiing all in one day. So that was really, really impressive as well. And it goes to show that the conditions are pretty, pretty good for steep skiing and ski mountaineering. And of course, central to the high alpine skiing environment here in Chamonix is the Valley Blanche. And as it pretty much goes without saying, the conditions up high on there are still really, really good and just keep, keep going to get better and better, really. So, yeah, the snow might not be soft powder every day, but everything's really well filled in and the grasses are covered and it's still very much peak Valley Bont skiing season. That said, the final section, so the, the murder glass, which you can possibly see behind me now, is getting increasingly difficult now. We've had quite a lot of rain, so that's washed away a lot of the snow. You, stat, you still can just about ski to the gondola without having to take your skis off, but there are lots of rocks to hit now. So definitely don't be taking your favourite skis down it because you're going to get some scratches unless you've taken, been taking your skis on and off lots. So yeah, bring an old pair of skis, rock skis if you've got them. But yeah, still ski top to bottom. And if you are doing the Valley Blanche, be sure to check out the Ice Canyon, which is currently skiable. Indeed, you can even ski a few couple of these tunnels, which is really good fun, really impressive. Looks great on camera as well, but it's not actually all that difficult. So to find this, going down the basically the, the normal way out on the Valley Blanche, you head off skiers right at the point where often a lot of people will stop for lunch. It's not the Salamanje, it's actually quite a bit lower than the Salamanje, but it's much a safer spot for people to stop these days. But there'll be loads of tracks heading there now anyway, so you follow the tracks and basically aim for the what would be the central surface mount water channel on the glacier in summer, which of course now is full of snow, so you can ski it. It's like skiing a little border, border cross track, it's pretty awesome and really good fun. And as for the peace skiing conditions, much of the Evasion Mont Blanc area is really, really suffering now. So, Combly, Majev, Saint Gervais, most of the runs are closed. The runs which are open are really not worth skiing, unfortunately. So, if you want to go to Evasion Mont Blanc and make the most of your unlimited ski pass, then your only option really is Le Contamine. And Le Contamine is actually still pretty good. The piece up there holds snow really well, and they're 
enjoyable, wide, often quite rolling pieces. So yeah, I'd still recommend going to Le Contamine if you get the chance, but definitely avoid heading to saint gervais Majeve, etc. It's not worth the effort. Similarly, much the same can be said about Lazouche. It's really not worth going there now. Yes, most of the runs are still open, but the snow there is terrible. It's just, yeah, don't bother really, you'd be wasting your time. But as for the rest of the areas in the Chamonix Valley, they're all still mostly complete. Most of the runs are open at Brevin Fougere, Grandmonte and La Tour. Indeed, you can still just about ski down to the valley at La Tour and Grandmonte. It's probably not advisable, especially if you like your skis. You're going to trash them on the rocks, especially later on in the day. But yeah, the home runs of the Pierre Rick and at La Tour are still open. So yeah, you can do them. Just be just beware that there are lots of rocks and hazards here at the bottom. Remarkably, there is still one run, one piece open at the Planard beginners area as well. Although I don't know how, because it is literally just a car park now. There's very little snow left. But yeah, they managed to keep that open somehow. But if you are coming out as a beginner, as I've been recommending for most of the season, your best bet is to head to Laval Main up at La Tour. Some of the runs there are now closed too, but as, a, as far as beginning runs go, that is your best bet. And as I've said before, once you get the hang of it, you can head up onto the main piece of the tour anyway, which is all pretty beginner friendly as well. But just to demonstrate the mix and fortunes between low level and high level resorts, Brevent have announced this week that they're planning to extend their opening by an extra week. So they're now going to be open until I think the 21st of April. They'd initially planned to be shutting on the 14th of April. So yeah, that's good news if you are coming out for a late season ski. And of course, remember that Gaumonté, snow and weather permitting, is planning to be open until the 5th of May this year. So it's a really, really long season if you are coming here. You can ski at Gaumonté well into May. The weather this last week has been mostly really hot and sunny. It's proper felt like summer down in the valley. And as such, the slopes have been incredibly slushy too. The exception being Thursday, where it rained. And it rained up to at least 2,300 metres. So that's not the height of many of the pieces, unfortunately. So the snow was pretty terrible on Thursday. And in, even above that point where it had started to turn to snow, it was Grawpool. So Grawpool, it looks a little bit like hail, but it's soft. It kind of looks like polystyrene ball bearings, really. I mention this because this is an important avalanche hazard. So if a Grawpool air gets buried within the snowpack, basically acts like ball bearings. So it can very much increase the avalanche risk if you are on slopes which haven't consolidated between snowfall events. So while, yeah, anywhere south facing and west facing in particular, the Grawpool will be melting and combining with the rest of the snowpack very quickly. But on north facing aspects, especially on the sheltered aspects, that Grawpool air will potentially persist now into the next snowfall event, which I'll come on to in a minute. So yeah, bear that in mind if you are heading off piste in your avalanche hazard awareness. And that next snowfall event is potentially coming round thick and fast. So the temperature is set to plummet this weekend and potentially it's going to be snowing down to the valley. So snowfall totals may not be big, but it's definitely going to be enough to bury that grapple layer up high. And then looking further on into the forecast, it's predominantly staying unsettled and cold for the coming week. Again, the exact details may change and the position of the weather fronts and the depressions may move south, move north. So Chamonix could end up missing the bulk of the snow or it could end up getting absolutely dumped on. But at the moment, at least, it's looking at as there's going to be a pretty decent snowfall towards the middle of the week as well. So again, that's worth taking into account for your avalanche awareness as well. So once again, it looks like further south and east into Italy, they'll be getting the lion's share of the snow yet again. That's been basically a tale of this latter half of the season. But fingers crossed, a decent chunk of it will make its way to Chamonix this time as well. So that's about it for now for this week. But remember, the ski season is far from over, especially up in the high mountains here in Chamonix. There's still plenty left to play for, plenty of fun to be had, plenty of powder to be found, and plenty of lines to be skied. So if you are coming out soon, as always, have fun, stay safe, and till next week.